This is the ECE 1215 Electroacoustics and Audio Electronics lecture on distortion and fuzz guitar effects. The first type of distortion effect that I'm going to talk about is the soft clipping circuit. So as you can see in this circuit, I have an op amp, an input voltage source that I'm going to call V in, a power supply, so that's just V supply, I've got both plus and minus there. So plus 9 volts, minus 9 volts, and those are powering the op amp. And then I've got a resistor, 10 kilo ohms, in between the input voltage and the inverting terminal of the op amp, two diodes in between the output of the op amp and the inverting terminal, and then the non-inverting terminal is grounded here. So this is really just a non-inverting amplifier, but the feedback path has diodes in it rather than a resistor. So what's going to happen is that we're forcing a current through this resistor and the magnitude of that current is going to be V in divided by 10 kilo ohms. Now that current also has to be forced through the diodes. And so what the voltage to current relationship for a diode looks like is something like this. Where current is on the vertical axis and voltage is on the horizontal axis. So let's just say that I pump a little bit of current through those diodes and I will produce a voltage where that current intersects the curve. Let's say that's 0 0.5 volts. So that's a very small current. Now let's say that I double that current and the voltage that I get at the output doesn't increase very much, 0 0.7 volts say. Now let's double that current up to here and I still don't get much of an increase, maybe up to 0 0.9 volts. So what's going to happen is that for an input signal that looks like a sine wave, the very small amplitude parts of this signal are going to be amplified a lot, and the high amplitude parts are going to be flattened out. So you get a signal out that looks like this. And that's what clipping looks like. So let's look at a simulated output from LT Spice of this circuit. And you can see that this is what you get. The blue is the input and the green is the output. Now obviously the type of output that you get is going to be dependent on the characteristics of the circuit. So if I change that 10k resistor value to a different resistance, I'm going to get a different output curve. Now take a look at the harmonic curve that you get at the output. We can see the fundamental, 1 kilohertz, is present here. Then 2 kilohertz, the second harmonic, has no energy. 3 kilohertz is present, 4 is not, 5 is, 7, 9, 11, etc. are, so you get all of the odd harmonics in the output. This type of circuit will generate odd harmonics. So let's look at a way to reduce the clipping a little bit which is by putting a resistor in parallel with the two diodes. That creates a sort of different response that reduces the clipping a little bit. It's very difficult to analyze analytically because the equations um, break down pretty quickly. You can create load lines and things like that, but just be aware that putting a resistor here will reduce the clipping. Additionally, you can put resistors in series with the diodes to reduce it further and things like that. There's a lot of playing around that you can do. The output that we get now with a 47K resistor placed in parallel with those diodes looks like this. You can see that clipping is still there, but it's a little bit reduced in its amplitude. The harmonics that you get at the output now look like this. So we can see the fundamental, the third, the fifth, and now there start to be some noise in additional harmonics that show up and things like that. You can tell, though, definitely that there are fewer high-level harmonics than there were when we didn't put the resistor in series with the diodes. So that's something that you can play around with. So here's the really fun part. We can actually simulate what these circuits sound like by playing a WAV file in LT Spice and then generating the output and listening to it. So I've recorded myself playing a couple of guitar chords and plug that into LT Spice, and as you can see here, I've got the output. Now I've recorded two different versions, one with a fairly low resistor in parallel with the two diodes, that was 56K, and then one with a much higher valued resistor, 560K, that produces a lot more distortion. So let's listen to all of these files. 
First the original. And then the low gain version. And then the high gain version. So these were actually just generated in LT Spice, but they sound very realistic. If you built the circuit, this is pretty much exactly what it would sound like. So this is a really good demonstration and um, can really help you build uh, effects that sound cool. A different type of distortion stage that you can see sometimes is a hard clipping stage. So the hard clipping part is basically the fact that you've got two limiting diodes that clip the signal. Now this is going to work in a different way than soft clipping, even though we still have an op amp. The op amp here is only providing gain. So this is just for gain. There's no distortion supposedly going on in that stage. We've also got the input, V in. We've got power over here. So this is just gain and then hard clipping here. Now basically what's going to happen is that I'll call this right here A, where A is some gain. In this case it's negative 10. Um, it'll change though depending on what the feedback resistor is. A times V in. What's going to happen is that V out over here is going to stay A times V in until it passes the diode threshold voltage and then the diodes just become um, basically uh, cut off at 0 0.7 volts or whatever their threshold voltage is and they keep the output there. So it's just hard limiting at whatever the diode threshold voltage is. A different way to think about this though is that we have a resistor here, in this case it's 1 ohm, and so what you're doing is between the voltage and the current for the diodes you can draw the same diode characteristic curve and now come up with a load line where the point on the voltage axis is A times V in. That's the maximum voltage that you could get and then the current is going to be A times V in divided by R in the case shown R is 1 ohm, that's actually pretty low. Then you draw a line connecting those and the output voltage that you get is wherever the diode characteristic curve intersects with the load line. So this is V out. Now for 1 ohm this load line is basically vertical or almost vertical. That's when you get basically the really hard clipping. For different values of resistances, though, you need to draw the load line and figure out what happens. Again, real hardcore like analysis of this is pretty difficult mathematically, but that's a, at least a fundamental theoretical understanding of what's going on here. So by changing the value of this resistor right here, we can change the amount of clipping that's going to occur. You can also do things like put resistors in parallel with these diodes that will change the characteristics put resistors in series with the diodes that will change the characteristics all of these things can be played around with to create different types of clipping effects all right so this is what a hard clipping waveform looks like as you can see we have kind of a linear area going on where the gain just is amplified linearly that happens at the negative end too, and then it's just cut off and it's flat up at the top and at the bottom. There's something going on here called sticking, which is sort of a, a very enhanced nonlinear effect that can happen when diodes don't go back to normal immediately. Uh, that will produce kind of a really harsh sound. So it's good to sort of limit those effects by putting extra resistors in parallel and series with the diodes. This is going to be a pretty harsh sound. And this is what the harmonics look like of that type of circuit. Again, you can see we've got only odd harmonics here. No even harmonics at all. Okay, so now if we change the value of the resistor that's connected to the two diodes, 
we can actually create what's called rounding by changing how that load line works. So I've increased it from 1 ohm to 10k. 1 ohm is probably bad news. That would probably burn out that 1 ohm resistor. Um, so don't use anything that low. But now we've increased it to 10k, and this is what the output looks like. So it's a little bit more rounded at the output. It still doesn't look exactly like how the soft clipping did, but now it, uh, it just has different characteristics. And the harmonics look like this. You can see still no even harmonics, but the characteristics are somewhat changed. We've got the third, fifth, seventh. The ninth isn't really there. Then 11th, 13th, 15th, and that's about it. So this has a much, um, a much more like softened sound to it. So let's take a listen to what some of these sound like then when simulated in LT Spice. Here's the original again. So that this first sound was with the rounding on, the second sound was without the rounding. So you can see that you get a much harsher sound without the rounding on. I'll also post a link to a video telling you how to do this in LT Spice, and I will post all of these LT Spice files as well as the audio file that I used for this so that you can play around with these circuits and see what they sound like for yourself. Let's talk about some more extreme distortion effects now. These are called fuzz effects, and you'll see that they're called fuzz because fuzz just describes how they sound pretty well. The fuzz face is a very simple circuit that has two transistors um, and then just a handful of other components, but it, it does sound really cool when you use it in the right type of music. It has sort of a Jimi Hendrix type of sound. The first stage here is really just a common emitter amplifier that's then fed into another common emitter amplifier but there's a really weird biasing scheme going on in between those two where the emitter of the second stage is fed back into the base of the first stage and this is a really weird type of feedback that's not really used in most normal circuits it apparently was used historically to get a lot of gain out of very poor low grade transistors um, because it's a very it's a very strange biasing scheme that's very difficult to analyze mathematically but it increases the gain a lot it actually has the effect though of decreasing the input resistance which means that um, sometimes the impedance matching between these pedals and other things can be all screwy so you need to be a little bit careful about that then at the end we've just got decoupling um, with a with a volume potentiometer and there is a potentiometer here um, called the fuzz that has a capacitor in parallel with it as we know when you put a bypass capacitor in parallel with the resistor that's connected to the emitter of a transistor or to the cathode of a tube or something like that you increase the gain so as you increase the amount of resistance that this capacitor is in parallel with by changing the relative um, angle of the potentiometer you can increase or decrease the gain of that stage. Alright so this is what a similar mock-up looks like in LT Spice. You can see that I'm using different transistors because the BC108 transistors from many many years ago are not in LT Spice. You might be able to find models for those online if you want, but they're probably not all that different from 2N3904s. Traditionally, people do say that germanium transistors in these types of pedals sound a lot better than silicon transistors. So you might want to play around and see if you can get models for germanium transistors too. That might be interesting to see. 2N3904s are silicon transistors, and those are said to have a harsher sound. So here's a simulation of what the output from just a 1 kilohertz sine wave looks like. You can see that it's kind of a square wave with a low duty cycle, basically. It's a little bit, um, you know, filtered though, because it's not just quite a square wave. So it's a little bit 
um, low pass filtered with respect to a normal square wave. This is what the harmonics look like. As you can see, it has both even and odd harmonics. So the sound is going to be different from just soft clipping or hard clipping because the even harmonics are in there too. There's also a lot of harmonics. So um, there's, there's a, a different harmonic pattern totally, and there's a lot of them in there. So let's listen to what the fuzz face sounds like. Here's our original song. And here's the fuzz. So that's a pretty extreme effect. I think it's made even more extreme by the fact that the wave file, I think it's interpreted as a pretty high input voltage much higher than the guitar would actually be. I'm not 100% sure how the wave file is interpreted as a voltage, so that's definitely something to play around with in the future. The last effect that I'm going to talk about is called the Big Muff. There are lots of different versions of the Big Muff circuit. This is just one of them. Um, this is pretty complicated, so I'm not really going to go through it in detail. Uh, but basically there are a bunch of different stages going on here. There's a first gain stage right here. Now this is actually a sort of non... or Now this is actually an inverting amplifier. This transistor can take the place of an op amp even though it has way, way, way lower gain. So it's going to provide the same basic functionality as an inverting amplifier with the gain set by R4 and R2 here but the gain's going to be a lot lower because it's just a transistor and not an op amp. Then we have what's called the sustain stage. That's going to be essentially gain. They called it sustain back in the day, but we would call it gain now. Then we have two more gain stages with clipping diodes. So that's kind of a soft clipping effect with the gain in a row. So those both produce soft clipping even though they're using, again, transistors rather than op amps, so the gain is going to be slightly lower. Then we have a tone stage. Now this is sort of similar to a Baxendall, so I'll call it Baxendall-esque tone stage. And then we just have another amplifier at the end to make up for a little bit of the gain that was lost from the tone stage. Okay, so we've got initially gain, then an actual gain control, then clipping, then clipping, then tone, then some more gain. So there's a lot of different stages all stacked together here. Then we've got a volume potentiometer at the very end. So here's that same circuit in LT Spice with all of the values filled in. There's lots and lots and lots of different versions of this circuit with different values. This is just one of them. Uh, this is one that happens to be one of the more popular versions, but again, there's an infinite number of different variations that this circuit can take. Um, again, input's here, output is right here. So here's what input and output looks like for one setting. So again, this is with tone at midpoint, basically. So the as you can see, it's not really clipping, it's not really acting like the fuzz face, it's just adding basically a lot of harmonics to the output. So this is what the actual harmonic structure looks like. As you can see, this one doesn't have even harmonics. It only has odd harmonics. So it acts more like a clipping circuit than it does like a fuzz face. So let's listen to some simulations in LT Spice then of what the Big Muff sounds like. Again, here's our original signal. Here's the output with the tone knob in the middle. Here's the output with the tone knob turned all the way to bass. And with the tone knob turned all the way to treble. Alright, so that's just a smorgasbord there of different distortion and fuzz effects. 
I will post all of the LT Spice files as well as the original guitar file that I used so you can play around with these and see what they sound like if you want to try building one of them for yourself someday.